So we're looking at TTG High Slide Gallery Pro. In the last video we went over the page settings and meta tags and we're now moving on to the identity plate and header page settings. Um, so with the identity plate, that is this thing right here, um, you can turn that off or on using this checkbox. But it's best to leave it on because the underlying code does factor into search engine optimization. Um, so if you have a logo or something, this is a great place to put it. You can edit that by clicking on the ID plate and bringing up this window where you can type in whatever text you want to use. Or uh, you could do it the way I prefer to do it, which is to use a graphical identity plate, which uh, you prepare a file beforehand in Photoshop or something similar. And then you can load that in. And it replaces your identity plate. Um, there are two things you can do with this, or rather two places where you can put this. You can leave it in the header, which is where it is now, and that's the area above the menu bar. Or you can actually insert it into the menu bar. Um, and then later on, when we get into menu settings, I'll show you how to increase the size of the menu bar so that you can accommodate that. Uh, but that's going to come later. For now, we're going to leave it in the header. Now these sliders down here let you adjust the position of the identity plate on the x-axis and the y-axis so we can shift it horizontally by moving the x position slider. Setting this at 50% will put your identity plate in the dead center of your page. And then on the y position it's much the same thing. You can uh, move it up or down depending on the position of the slider and again 50% will give you uh, a perfectly centered identity plate. So let's move down to the header and page settings. This is where we start setting colors for our gallery. Uh, the header background, of course, affects the header. Um, now you can pick colors in the color picker. Or what I think is even cooler is that you can just click and hold on the picker. Then it gives you this thumbnail that you can start dragging around the screen. Uh, so you can sample colors from other places. Now I've got some color stuff over on my second display, so I'm just going to grab some colors from over here. And then uh, I'm going to do the same thing for the page background, which is the second color picker. So you can see what that changes. We're going to make it this color. Uh, the links on the page affects hyperlinks that appear in your text for example in your paragraphs or down here uh, in your footer and ultimately will not affect the color of your menu items we have separate controls for those so let's go ahead and pick some colors for our hyperlinks I'll make it a nice brown color and you can see that it's changing the, the menu colors but those will be overwritten at a later time Okay, a uh, hyperlink text decoration will allow you to put underlines on your links or not. You can see that here. Uh, now it's an underline, now it's not. Here you can set a hyperlink for the header area. So this is a link that will be active anytime you mouse over up here. By default, it's just set to uh, click back to this page. You might want to change this to your domain name. So make this a link to the front page of your website at all times. So I would put in demo.theturninggate.net and that will take me back to the front page of my website uh, anytime someone clicks my header. Um, page master font families, you can select a font stack basically to be whatever you want and what these will affect uh, are any elements on the page that don't have font family settings of their own. Uh, so if there is no dedicated font family setting, this one will do it. Um, you can also, if you prefer to reorder the uh, priority of the fonts, you can do that here just by editing the font stack.
Uh, the header height slider lets you adjust the height of that header space. So if you have a very large identity plate, for example, uh, you might want to increase the size of this to allow yourself more space. And then fixed header width will actually allow you to rein in um, the header. What happens on wide displays is that if this is not checked, you can see that things will fly to the far side of the page. So on a very wide resolution display, your menu is going to be far to the right if you have it such a right alignment. And if you had this aligned to the left, then it's going to get far flung to the left. Meanwhile, your thumbnail grid stays center. So if we fix the header width, we can actually specify a maximum width for that header area. So maybe I'll go 950, which should line things up nicely with uh, my thumbnail grid. And you can see that when I widen the display now, things stay in line uh, with my grid. So that is one approach to the header. Uh, the next approach we're going to investigate in the next video is using the menu settings to create a slightly different variation on the header. Uh, but that brings this video to a close, so we'll see you next time.